Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to the um, preparation video for Chapter 5 and Annihilation 3. Um, it is coming out very, very soon, and I want to make this video to help get everybody ready and prepared for when it does, because there are some, so like, you, you basically you want to be able to clear Annihilation 3 the week that it comes out. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, if Chapter 5 and Annihilation 3 are permanent content, meaning it's here to stay forever, it's not like an event, um, is there any rush for me to clear through all of Chapter 5 and Annihilation 3? And although that is true for Chapter 5, you don't have to rush through it. You, don't, you can basically um, not even touch it at all. Like Chapter 5, you actually can just not even touch it when it launches. But that's not the same for Annihilation 3, because Annihilation 3, there is a rush to, for you to clear it as soon as possible. Um, well, not as soon as possible, but at, le at the very least on the first week. Because an Annihilation 3, once you clear it, it increases your weekly random cap by 100. You, now, 100 is not a lot, but it also increases the um, efficiency of, you know, your standing efficiency compared to Annihilation 2. Annihilation 2. Um, Annihilation 3 gives you more sanity per run and it costs the same amount of or more um, a random per run and it costs the same amount of sanity as or Annihilation 2 meaning you can spend less sanity and get the same basically get more a random per run which is why if you want to be as efficient as possible you want to be doing Annihilation 3 instead of Annihilation 2. Uh, it's not a huge huge deal so if you're uh, if you're just getting started, don't be like too discouraged that you're not able to clear Annihilation 3. And um, the good thing is, you know, if you want to increase your weekly um, weekly cap of Orundum, what you can do is you can actually borrow a friend's unit to clear through Annihilation 3 once, because Annihilation 3 is actually clearable with only um, one-star units. But it's very, very difficult to make a very stable like auto team for Annihilation 3 because there's a lot of swapping around. And we're not going to go into every single detail of this video. It's not an Annihilation 3 clear guide video. It's more of a which units should I be raising and you know make getting them to E2 in order to help me have an easier time with Annihilation 3. So this video... Um, I have over here is someone's video on Bilibili, which is the Chinese YouTube. Uh, what you what you have to know is I although um, you know although I am Chinese, I have not played on the Chinese server of Ark Knights, but I am able to read Chinese, so I it's very easy for me to like do a lot of research and look at like you know look up guide videos and all that for uh, for Ark Knights very very easily, and this. What I have here basically is just um, a, a video that I found th that someone went into detail of clearing Annihilation 3. And we're not going to go through the entire video. I just wanted to show you a few parts of the video to give you an idea of basically what you're going to need in order to do it. And I will include the video and mm -hmm. all the videos in the description below just to give credit and um, reference. Although everything's in Chinese, you will be able to still click play and, and watch the video um, in your own free time when you when you want to do that. So as you can see over here, um, this this is basically the team that he used to clear through Annihilation 3. And although you could do it with all, um, all E1s, it is recommended that you raise some of your units to E2. And which, which one of those units exactly? And the, the biggest priority that um, I would give is actually um, actually two units, Shirayuki and Jitano, mainly because of their special skills. Now, if you have been watching some of my content before, where especially the one where I made like a team building guide and I kind of explain how there's um, units that have certain roles and as long as they fill that role, it is you know completely interchangeable. Although that is true for all the current content right now, um, once Annihilation 3 launches, that will no longer be the case because Annihilation 3 actually is very, very difficult. It's, it's very difficult compared to all the content that we currently have now. And certain units, you can't just um, use like a max level E1 and expect them to be able to do like, for example, if you see someone in, in a video using like, um, 
using like a blue poison or something, for example, like an E2 blue poison or um, an E2 um, Shirayuki, for example, you can't expect to be able to use like cruise or catapult to replace them because um, it does actually require their like special unique skills and traits and sometimes it also it requires the stats of an E2 to fill a specific role. So uh, in once Analogy 3 launches, um, I think a lot of your three stars will be retired because mainly because, especially if you want to farm it on auto, a lot of your three stars are going to be retired um, because mainly just because they don't have enough stats. The there's a few very very tricky things with Annihilation 3 and I'll actually show you very very briefly right now. So the, the main thing that makes Annihilation 3 very very um, tricky and difficult to do is actually these like they have these like crossbow things. So every few seconds these crossbow things will just keep shooting at your units nonstop. And um, basically they're gonna hit the first thing that they come into contact with. So you can see over over here, Meteor down here is actually taking a lot of damage from the, these crossbows. Um, it's just like shooting him nonstop. See, it, it's like chunked him a little bit. And that um, com combined with some of the mages running down, if your snipers that you're putting in like these slots, uh, if they don't have enough stats, it's very, very easy for them to just die instantly. Uh, it's the same with your with your frontliners, your tanks that you're putting putting down here as well. Um, and the other thing is the there's also a lot of drones on this stage. You can see um, over here there, there's these drones, and these drones are like new new types of drones that are introduced with Chapter Five. And these drones they have a lot more HP than the regular drones, and they also do um, do arse damage, you know, magic damage which does a lot of damage to your tanks as well. And they do pretty high damage, but mainly they have a, a, a ton of HP. So um, there, are, um, there are cases, for example, like when a drone is running down, um, if you're using like an E1 sniper and the like attack interval happens to, you know, you happen to be attacking a, a unit down here and um, the at attack interval doesn't line up, there is the chance of that drone just like running past your 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 sniper if your sniper is only at E1. So there are stat requirements as well for um, for a lot of your ranged units units for for your team. So the main thing that you um, that I would really recommend is mainly your snipers, um, both your single target snipers and your AOE sniper. I highly, highly, highly recommend you get them to E2, um, the, whichever one you're using. And if you're only using an E1 sniper now, it is probably time to uh, to get another one as well. Um, if you have like an AOE sniper at E2, for example, if you're if you're running a lineup like this over here, and your Shirayuki is E2, and then you're using Cruise, um, it might be fine. And because this Shirayuki is only E1, so it's doing a lot less damage. But if your Shirayuki is like E2 level 40 or something, for example, um, it should be able to cover it, no problem. But the the for your your bot side, it is very also very important for your um, for you to get your your sniper, your other sniper that you're putting down here to E2, mainly because it's going to be tanking the crossbows that are going to be hitting you nonstop as well as a lot of the mages that spawn. There's always a lot of mages coming out um, every little while. There's always these these guys in suits, these mages, and they walk out and they start like throwing uh, throwing fireballs and all that, all that crazy stuff. So it is very, very important that you have your snipers be relatively beefy. And if you, like, for example, if for this slot, like, if you pr put, like, an E1 max level cruise over here, it's, she's gonna die. Alright, <laughs> so if you're using both, like, E1 snipers, um, it's really just not gonna cut it. So it is, it is very, very important that you, you raise your snipers to E2. 
The other thing is, like, down here, you can see there's a Shaw. And this Shaw is actually using Shaw's skill, too, to push the heavy guys into this hole. Um, and it also requires you to have your skill at um, rank 7 for you to be able to do that. So the other thing, the, the second thing that you want to do is um, your Shaw doesn't need to be, like, E2, but she needs to have her skill at, um, at, at rank 7 in order to be able to fulfill her role. That's basically another very important thing. The third thing is um, you will need, it's very, very important that you have an AoE healer in this slot, mainly because the AoE healer needs to be constantly um, healing both like Shaw, who's gonna be taking damage and the sniper or whoever you're putting here, as well as the frontliner or tank that you put, um, like guard or tank that you put in this slot. Um, at the same time and they're, they're constantly going to be taking damage from these crossbows so using an AoE uh, using an AoE healer is much better than using a single target healer in this case so it's also quite important for you to be raising an AoE healer which kind of makes things a little bit complicated because AoE healers you can only get them from gacha like the, there's no um, free to play three star version of an AoE healer although I really really think they should have added one because um, like you know AoE healers and single target healers aren't really the same and the other thing is you know the third thing is definitely your healers um, they they don't necessarily need to be E2 but it's also quite a good idea to have their stats a little bit higher just to be able to sustain um, your team but I think an E1 one will will be able to do it as long as um, you get them to max level and as long as the one you're using at the bottom is an AoE healer so that's kind of the third thing. Uh, as in terms of actually your tanks or your your vanguards, it's actually not that important um, compared to the 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 rank of your your snipers. So your your ranged units um, is probably the highest priority. Your snipers and um, also an AOE mage that you're going to be putting down here is also extremely extremely high priority. Now, there's actually a very specific thing that you can do to make um, Annihilation 3 very, very easy. And the first thing is you, two specific units, I mentioned them briefly before. The first one is Shirayuki, and the second is Jitano. And the reason why the two of them are so good for Annihilation 3 is they're actually able to cheese um, part of the stage. This, this um, Shirayuki that you see in this clear guide video is only at Elite 1, so she's not able to do it. But if you raise your Shirayuki to e E2, which I have in the second video, this Shirayuki is E2, uh, she can actually like just completely wreck havoc. Just just watch this. Like um, when, when the units spawn over here, they actually stand here for a while. And the reason why Shirayuki is so strong at E2 is because her for... For AoE snipers, their range increases at E2. So she can actually hit one, two, three, four. Um, basically, she can hit four blocks away. So one, two, three, four blocks away, um, both top and bottom, once you get them to, to get her to E2. Meaning she can clear this entire zone by herself. She can also hit the ones down here as well, standing in this, this slot, which is pretty. Like, this range is just so disgusting. Oh man, she can even hit those over here, right? She can clear the entire, entire top side by herself if you get her to E2. So Shiryuki is definitely like MVP here. And in this case, using Shiryuki is actually better than Meteorite because she actually has a second use besides clearing the units that just stand there. She also does a lot of, uh, because she can do arch damage, she can do a lot of damage to the heavy units that spawn at the very end, as you can see over here, if you use, if you activate her, um, her skill. See when the heavy spawn at the very, very end, she can activate her skill in order to clear them very, very easily. And because these heavy units are highly armored, um, Shoryuki, when she activates her skill too, she will do a lot more damage than Meteorite, which in this specific case makes using Shirayuki better than using Meteorite. And this is just, this, this range is just so disgusting. And then afterwards, um, the, there's, this is the final boss, 
that's going to spawn on Annihilation 3. Um, Shariki can do the exact same thing as well. You can see her popping her skill. And this, this guy is just getting chunked. Like, look at his health. Before he even moves. Now, this guy does really high damage when he actually comes and comes into melee range. So, a way that you can... Um, the reason why your tanks and melee units don't actually need to be that strong is if you have, like, your frontliners or your... Um, not frontliners, your, your range DPS, uh, mainly Shirayuki, at a very high rank, she can actually take care of a lot of the enemies before they even get into range. So this guy hasn't moved yet, and he is like, he is almost dead. Okay, he is almost dead. And um, be because um, Shoryuki's skill ended, he basically swapped, swapped Shoryuki out for, for a mage, because these guys are heavily armored, so he's using a mage to, to clear, um, or, or a caster to clear them. As you can see over here, now the other the other cheese you can do um, this guy didn't do it here is instead of using like Amiya over here, what he could have done is actually swap out um, swap out Exu for Jitano, and Jitano actually has a skill that allows her to hit three blocks away. So once she activates her second skill, uh, Jitano is actually able to hit one, two, three blocks over here and actually hit this guy. So. The moment that this guy spawns, if you have like a Chitano in this spot and Shoryuki in this spot, you're actually able to kill the boss before he even moves. Meaning you don't need very strong healers, very strong tanks in order to do that. Now, if you don't want to cheese it um, that way, then the other option is to have stronger frontliners and stronger healers, which means you will have to raise, basically you will have to raise like more units make other units stronger if you're if you're not using um, the Shirayuki Jitano cheese over here. The other cheese you could do is actually using um, I think Aafala can also hit this spot. I'm not too sure. I think I heard someone say that. Um, I think Jitano because she is also an AoE mage um, I think she's definitely worth raising and I actually switched to using Jitano on my main account. I was using Skyfire before but I, I actually do think Jitano is better because of her like insane range. Basically, Jitano can hit 12 blocks. She can hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All this entire area it, when she activates her second skill. So um, you can see that like this guy's already chunked to like this low. If you had a Jitano here popping her second skill, this guy is dead before he even moves. Right? So that's, that's another... Um, kind of very cheesy thing you can do as well. I, and I, I think this guy doesn't do it. He actually faces Jitano up when when this guy starts walking. Um, the main reason is because his Jitano is only E1. So if he put it out sooner, um, he's gonna get targeted by the the mages and the drones that are flying by. You can see that she's she almost died over here, um, plus this crossbow thing. But if you had your Jitano at E2, then you can actually face her this way and actually kill the boss, um, put her down earlier and actually kill the boss before the boss even moves. But if you, you know, if you can't do that, then there's also other ways where you can, you know, remove units, swap units, and once a unit dies, you know, you can put another one down and do a lot of like fancy stuff. But you really don't want to be doing that, especially if you want to have a very stable like auto team for for this. You can see. The, when the drone f flew over, um, the Chitano died as well. But this is, this is the last one, so it doesn't really matter. You can see this drone has a lot of HP. It's pretty sick. Alright, and so besides the two MVPs, Shirayuki and Chitano, um, and your, your, two snipe, your two single target snipers being E2, um, I think the next, the next best thing is also to have a ranged a ranged guard and this guy over here is using midnight and you can see the the reason for having a ranged guard is mainly because ranged guards can actually target the drones as well and the ranged guards can help you help your your snipers take down the drones a little bit easier as well so it's a very very good idea to um, to use a ranged guard if you can use a ranged guard um, definitely use one so if you have like Lapland, 
silver ash. It's a very, very good idea. Uh, I think frost leaf will definitely work as well. And midnight is actually very, very good because midnight can is like a budget version of um, of Lapland. He can do arts damage when he activates his skill, meaning that he can also do some damage to the hev heavily armored units as well. You can see this drone is like is really really tanky like his meteor is e1 max level skill 7 and it just like it almost flew in right it's like cutting it super super close so if you're like an attack interval like messes up on an auto run you would have leaked one and you would have lost some orundum there so it's very very important i think to have your snipers um raised to e2 i think snipers raised to e2 is definitely extremely high priority um next to the to your two mvp units and then i think after that that probably your your range guard to to e2 if you can if you're using like lapland um definitely definitely use if you can use an e2 lapland um, i think an e1 lapland will still work as well same with silver ash like if you have silver ash e2 there's i mean this is gonna be a joke if you have silver ash e2 but um i think besides that it's like I mean, there are intervals like where you can't just clear everything with silver ash he could you can use his skill when like the pressure is really really high but just having like silver ash e2 isn't gonna carry the entire thing you know and i think that's also a good thing because i think a lot of players are really getting used to just silver ash doing his like you know little move and clearing the entire map and then they're just like you know silver ash op but um, in the future they're designing maps to make it harder for you to not be able to do that as easily and i think annihilation 3 is uh, because of that constant pressure of units coming in um and also like you know there's there's also healing pressure and tanking pressure because of the constant attack from the the crossbows um there's a lot of things that you have to worry about and just having silver ash e2 just isn't going to cut it but having an e2 ranged um, guard is probably the next best thing after your um, your snipers so raise your two mvps to, to e2 if you're planning to use shiryuki and jitano if not it's fine um if you're not using planning to basically kill the boss before he moves or kill a lot of the units with shiryuki before they move um the other thing is just you will have to raise like stronger tanks and stronger healers essentially because you will have to start taking some damage from them but if you have like an e2 shiryuki you don't have to worry about that because you can clear like pretty much half of the top side by herself like if she's at e2 it's just it's very very disgusting um, the same thing with jitano if you have jitano at the bot side at e2 she can survive the crossbows hitting her and the drones and everything hitting her and then she can kill a lot of the units before they move as well so these two are definitely MVP. After that, um, your priority should be your, your single target snipers. If you can, um, try to get them to E2. And then after you getting getting these two to E2, um, if you're using Midnight, then obviously you can't raise them to E2. But if you're using another, another, um, a, another ranged guard, I would take that ranged guard to E2. And then after that, I would probably um, the, the next priority would probably be my healers um, and probably the AoE healer first because there's definitely more pressure on the bot side so AoE healer first and then the single target healer that's healing the top side and then after that you can raise your other melee units which aren't that important if you're using um, if you have a lot of strong ranged units because you can kill a lot of them before they even get into range and that's pretty much it for Annihilation 3 um, the units that you really need to raise. I think if you have Chitano, Shiryuki at E2, and two, two single target snipers at E2, and everybody else at E1 max level, you should be able to do it relatively easily. Um, the next thing, the, the other thing is you also want their skills. You pretty much want everybody's skills at rank seven at this point. So um, definitely work on doing that. Shaw is also very high priority for rank 7 because Shaw can't do her job if she is not at rank 7. And it's the same if you're using F Eater as well, it's the exact same skill. So you will need to raise um, F Eater's skill to rank 7 as well if you're planning to planning to use her. But all in all, 
Annihilation 3 is very, very clearable, even with only three stars and four stars. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Just um, keep playing and raise your units. And once it comes out, then we'll see. We'll see how it goes from there. The last final thing is probably just, just keep in mind that a lot of the things I'm saying now is for like a stable auto team for Annihilation 3. You know, because I don't want to be sitting there manually doing it and then like you know the attack interval messing up and then one drone slip by you know i don't want i don't want that type of stuff to happen which is why i'm recommending to raise those units just to fix those um like you know lower the margin of error essentially you don't need like you know e2 units to be able to clear it. as you can see from this video over here he doesn't have a single e2 unit a single five star single six star and he's still be able to, able to do it so clearing the stage is not going to be a problem and if you're currently at the stage where um you might have just started and annihilation 3 is coming out and you're worried you know i'm not going to be able to clear it i'm going to get less random per week you know i'm not going to be farming as efficiently as everybody else um the i think the kind of the, the uh, more realistic goal that you can work towards is raising some of these some of the, the key units and then raising your overall team to e1 max level and then using the support system to borrow a friend like an e2 silver ash a someone with like a if you have someone with like a max level e2 shirayuki like max potential max skill man maybe i should do that on my ult um wait i could do that on my main as well Get a max skill, max potential, max math, skill to mastery, uh, max level E2 Shiryuki. Like if you can borrow that, I think, I think it would be pretty insane. You, she would probably, she would probably wreck this entire map. I think that might, that might actually be pretty fun. Um, I'll consider doing that. I'm not, I can't make any promises, but if you can borrow something like that or borrow like a, someone's E2 Silver Ash, borrow someone's e2 like you know a afa i think i think it'll be pretty nice or, or borrow someone's e2 exu um, whatever you're missing to kind of fill those roles and help carry your team a bit i think it's very very doable with just um even if your units are not at, at like max level e1 i think it's still it's still doable if you have like someone's very strong support um, carry carry you so if you have like one unit at e2 you can borrow someone else's e2 unit to help you clear it the first time when it comes out right i think that's also another more realistic goal that you can aim for is like get 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 your main team to like maybe e1 you know 50 ish hopefully 60 ish and then um get one of your units to e2 and if you have one unit at e2 you're able to borrow someone else's e2 and use that e2 to help you get through this right so i think that's probably a more realistic goal if you're um, still struggling right now or if you just just started playing and you're worried about not being able to clear it because it's probably coming out quite soon um i think on the i, I heard some players that played on the um, cn server they said that um, basically the second part of chapter five like comes out a week after the initial release of chapter five so um, once chapter five launches you know this is coming right after so definitely definitely be pre prepared for that anyways that's pretty much it hopefully this video has helped you out um, gave you some clarity and if you haven't done so yet be sure to subscribe to my channel because i make videos like this all the time where i like kind of research like a lot of the future stuff um, you know, like full spoilers, all that, all that, all that good stuff. So be sure to subscribe um, and to catch more in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.